Hello and welcome to today's online service. Today we shall be singing hymn number 5, The Last and Did My Savior Bleed, verses 1, 3, and 4. Hymn number 11, Bringing in the Sheaves, verses 1 and 2. Hymn number 8, Blessed Assurance, verses 1 and 2. And hymn number 31, In the Sweet By and By. I shall be putting on my headphones every time we sing because my music comes via my computer. Let us now call upon the name of the Lord. In the Lord put I my trust. How say ye then unto my soul that she should flee like a bird unto the hills? Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth, who will remain faithful forevermore and who will never forsake the works of his hands. Amen. Mercy, grace, and peace to you from God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Our first hymn today is hymn number 5, Alas, and did my Savior bleed, verses 1, 3, and 4. Every time I announce a hymn, I shall give a chance to... Uh, to pause the video so that you can look up the hymns. That's hymn number five then. We'll be singing verses one, three, and four. Alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did my Sovereign Devote that sacred head for sinners such as I. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. And now I am happy all the day. Well, might the sun in darkness hide and shut its glories in. When my Christ, the mighty Maker, died for his own creatures. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Our drops of grief can repay the debt of love I owe. Here, Lord, I give myself away, this all that I can do. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Our psalm reading today is Psalm 46. I'm reading from the Book of Common Prayer. God is our hope and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will we not fear, though the earth be moved and though the hills be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof rage and swell, and though the mountains shake at the tempest of the same. The rivers of the flood thereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most Highest. God is in the midst of her, therefore shall she not be removed. God shall help her, and that right early. 
the heathen make much ado, and the kingdoms are moved. But God hath showed his voice, and the earth shall melt away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. O oh, come hither, and behold the works of the Lord, what destruction he hath brought upon the earth. He maketh wars to cease in all the world. He breaketh the bow, and nappeth the spear in sunder, and burneth the chariots in the fire. Be still then, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen, and I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Our next hymn is hymn number 11, Bringing in the Sheaves. We shall sing verses 1 and 2. Hymn 11, Bringing in the Sheaves, verses 1 and 2. In the morning, sowing seeds of kindness, sowing in the noon night and the new week, waiting for the harvest and the time of reaping, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, sowing in the sunshine, sowing in the shadows, fearing neither clouds nor winter's chilling breeze. By and by the harvest and the labor ended, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Our scripture read reading today is Matthew 16, verses 13 to 20. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father, who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly charged the disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. Here ends our gospel lesson. Let's now sing hymn number 8, Blessed Assurance, verses 1 and 2. Hymn number 8, verses 1 and 2.
blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Saviour all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Saviour all the day long. Blessed is mission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my side. Angels descending ring from above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Blessed are you, Shimon Bariona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Christ Jesus himself is the rock of our salvation. Now, a lot of people have the idea that because Peter means stone or pebble, Jesus said that upon the, that rock he will build his church. Well, actually, no. He said, you are Peter. Pebble. And on this rock, what is that rock? You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. That is the rock. The confession that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. That is the rock upon which the rock of ages, Christ Jesus, builds his church and builds you into his church as another stone a building brick of the city of god peter writes you must let yourself be built into the walls of the temple of god now this sounds very high polluting were you sitting there in a long-term care center you have every reason and every right to say, well, where does this, where do I fit in? Yes, you fit in. God is your hope and strength. He is your very present help in trouble. And that help is a prayer away. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. He who comes to me, says Jesus, I will in no wise cast out. And Paul says to the Thessalonians, pray without ceasing. God knows the prayers of your heart. You may depend on on Christ Jesus, the rock of ages. Your confession that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that confession is a rock upon which Christ Jesus builds His church and upon which His church builds its faith, upon which you build your faith Aches and pains are part and parcel of getting old. 
loneliness can also be part of growing old. Words that you know you know, but just don't want to come forward. They're part of life. Memories that you would have loved to remember, they just don't want to come. That is also part of life, as it is now. But that cannot, nothing can ever detract from the fact that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. Whether you live and whether you die, you are His. He cares for you and He loves you. Yes, your joints don't want to work all that well anymore. There's no way that you will be running a mile again. But that's all right. You are safe with Christ, the rock of ages. And you who confess Him as your Savior, Him, you, you He blesses. And He says to you, Blessed are you, because the Lord our God, our Father, through His Holy Spirit, has written that into your heart, the Gospel message, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God who cares for you, who loves you. So you may ask me now, okay, you're a spring chicken at 58. I don't know. A bunch of Catholic ladies call me father. It makes me feel old. What do I know about aches and pains? And memories that don't want to come. And legs and arms and fingers that don't want to work. What do I know? I have to admit, I know very, very little about what you have to go through. But Jesus Christ, God the Son, the Rock of Ages, the Rock on whom you have built your faith, and upon whom you continue to build your faith, He is with you. He knows exactly what you're going through. He knows how lonely you sometimes feel. He knows all your frustrations. Jesus Christ knows exactly what your earthly tent dwelling your body is capable of and is no more capable of. And although there are people who lose their patience with you, he will never, ever lose his patience with you. He is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And John writes in his epistles, God is love. So one may ask, why then? Doesn't he give us, well, eternal youth? For the simple reason that this earth has lots of sin and suffering and pain due to what man has done. The sins of mankind have caused this earth to be poisoned. The sins of mankind have resulted in aches and pains that people 200 years ago only knew when they were far, far older than you or me. And your body is your earthly tent dwelling, as Scripture says. And at the last, when this tent dwelling of yours stops functioning, gives out on you, God gives you a brand new glorified body. 
your body will be new, glorified, just like the body of Christ is a glorified body. And I can tell you that with authority, because the Word of God says so. And if the Word of God says so, oh yes, it is so. Confessing Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Confessing that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. That is a confession that you can make even though you're not able to speak anymore. God hears your prayers. What you are praying without opening your mouth, God hears. And you know something that's even more wonderful is when you don't even know what to pray anymore. When you are so overcome with sorrow, with, with sadness, with frustration, with pain. Paul writes to the Romans, Romans 8, God the Holy Spirit Himself intercedes on your behalf with groanings that can't be uttered. You have a prayer life to live. Now I added the words to live because it is so easy to fall into the trap of frustration and worry and sadness and all other kinds of things that are negative that we forget that Jesus Christ is the Son of the Living God and he admonishes the Holy Spirit actually admonishes you through the words of Paul to pray without ceasing what happens to your prayers when you pray them well so often we tend to think my prayers are the bounce off the ceiling you know something wonderful news you're wrong your prayers don't bounce off the ceiling Jesus Christ is everywhere and always he is right there with you because he is Emmanuel God with us he is God who is with you and he hears your prayer and he acts upon your prayer your prayer ascends to God the Father through Jesus Christ because you pray through him and the angels stoke the incense altar and with the incense altar in heaven your prayers ascend to God the Father and when you pray that God's name be hallowed It arises to the face of Almighty God and He is pleased by your prayer. When you pray that His kingdom will come, it happens because God Himself smells the fragrant incense together with your prayer. Not a word of your prayers to Almighty God prayed within his will well how do you know that you're praying within his will if it fits inside the Lord's Prayer we're going to pray that just now then it is acceptable to Almighty God and he hears your prayer because Jesus Christ the Son of God the Living God is with you the Lord of hosts is with you. The God of Jacob is your, your refuge. Ref, refuge sorry. Jesus Christ is present with you. And when you pray, he hears your prayer. And the Father hears your prayer. 
and he acts upon your prayer. So regardless how you feel, regardless of how difficult things are, regardless of how lonely you are, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, is with you. He hears your prayers, every word of them. And your Heavenly Father who loves you, well, He loved you so much that He had Jesus die for you, he hears, accepts, and acts upon your prayer. So you have a prayer ministry that the busy youngsters don't have. Actually, they have it as well. But they don't get around to it because they are so busy being busy. I want to ask you, don't stop praying. I want to ask you, remember that Jesus Christ is right there with you. He is especially there with you when you pray. Should I say you should especially remember that he is with you when you are praying. Because, yes, you end your prayer with it, but it is actually something that every Christian means when you say in Jesus name I ask this or through Christ my Savior or through Jesus Christ our Lord that is exactly how you pray in any case Jesus hears your prayer and he ensures that the Heavenly Father who sent him the Father who loved you so much that he sent him he hears it, and he will definitely act upon your prayer. Oh, you might not see it. You might not see what God does upon your prayer. But you may rest assured that what you pray in the name of Jesus Christ, to the honor and glory of God, to the furtherance of his kingdom, for your daily bread here, he hears and acts upon. Hold on to that. The Christ, the Son of the living God, Jesus, your Savior, will never leave your side. He says, I will never leave you and never forsake you. And that is why you can confess with King David, the Lord of hosts is with us. God of Jacob is our refuge. Amen. Now let's confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed and then we'll pray the Lord's Prayer together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn today is hymn number 31. Hymn 31 in the suite by and by. Hymn 31.
There's a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we can see it afar. For the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there in the sweet by and by. We shall meet on that beautiful shore In the sweet by and by We shall meet on that beautiful shore We shall sing on that beautiful shore The melodious songs of the bell and our spirits shall sorrow no more, nor decide for the blessings of rest. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful song. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless. I hope to see you again soon.